What's the crack? Welcome back to Severe May. I'm Andy Stevenson and I'm joined by Leon the Hitman. No, sorry, not the yeah, Hitman. Yeah. Leon the Professional the here. Professional, I forgot about yeah. the name change. Um, <coughs> he does have a fight. He will be fighting on Cage Warriors Dublin on Saturday, October 14th in the RDS. And you finally have an opponent. Who are you fighting? Um, I, I can't really pronounce this word. I, Ian Davis, I think. I think it's Ewan. Ewan, 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 Ewan Davis. Davies. Um, yeah, yeah, so he's the guy that stepped up and uh, contracts are signed now, so I wasn't So you just, that, you just got that today then, Just got it? that there about two hours ago, yeah. Okay, yeah. so obviously, so this one is not, you, you typically fight at 155, yep. a lightweight. Yep. This, am I right in saying this is yep. a welterweight? This is a welterweight one, um, so obviously it was, it was coming close to the fight and um, I did, like, Chris was like, you can't be cutting major amount of weight. So, so. <laughs> something uh, uh, Chris, like, you can't be cutting major amount of weight without yeah. knowing about an opponent. So uh, he was like, "Look, we're gonna do this one at 77, you know, because I'm a big guy, Andy. You know, like I cut a lot of weight, and you know, I think I can fucking, you know, hang with any welterweight weight as well, you know. So let's yeah. see what happens in this one, you know. But see, look, obviously you're coming off a great win in in Italy there over over Dimitri uh, Gerlin. Mm. Um, but have you known since that fight? When was that? that was only a couple of months ago. Se seven, eight weeks ago. So, yeah. So yeah. Like, have you known? Uh, you've known since that fight yeah. that you're going to be on double. Yeah. So got obviously got out unscathed, um, injury free, and um, they, uh, Edith actually uh, said, "I'm presuming you're going to be on the Dublin card in October." And um, I said, "Absolutely." Come out unscathed, and yeah, so it was aiming for it, and here it is, you know. Absolutely. I'd say it's frustrating enough that when you're like we are literally seven days out right now yeah. from from the fight. Uh, when you don't know the name, you're a man for visualization. Yeah. You've, you've talked yeah. about this before. Yeah, absolutely. So, what's going through your mind as you're thinking, right? I'm fighting next week, but I've no idea against who. Yeah. So, uh, trying to stay focused, uh, like as focused as possible. Um, the visualization. Yeah, visualizing the, the night of the fight and all, but you've no opponent in mind, so you haven't got a face. Um, the, look, when you have a face, it kind of makes things a little bit easier than that. But like I, I was very positive that like no matter what I was going to be on this card, and I was promised I was going to be on. Uh, yeah, look, I'm I'm always ready. It doesn't matter who the opponent is. I'm going to get in there and smash, you know. So absolutely, you put on a brilliant performance against Jurlene in Italy, taking on a hometown guy as well. Um, you must have been really happy with that one. Obviously, first round finish. Oh, I, over the moon with that one, man. But <coughs> talking to you before, I, I told you what was going to happen and what way it was going to be, and I just knew I was levels above Jurlene, you know. Did it so? You told me, I think you told me it was a second round. I said KO. second, yeah. Um, <coughs> it, but it, did the fight play out pretty much how you expected it to? Um, they never really play out the way you think, you know. Like in the in your head, what like when you're thinking what way? Like obviously you're you're, you're seeing, you know, right, dominate them in this position, that position. But a fight's a fight, and you can never imagine exactly how it goes, you know. But I did see a lot of like holes in his grappling and stuff, and you know once. We, I felt them in the clinch and that I knew like what was coming, you know. I just ragged all them to the ground and stayed heavy and uh, got the back. And once I got the back, that was it, you know, it was done. Your streak at the moment is, is absolutely fantastic. <coughs> You're one of the hottest prospects in Ireland from, from my money. Um, was it seven finishes in a row now? Six in a row. Six now. finishes in a row now? Seven, seven, seven. seven? Uh, oh, row, okay, well, <laughs> seven. Soon, soon to be seven, seven apparently. Soon to be seven. Um, to be seven. Um, but like that must give you great confidence, right? Just building off uh, a lot of momentum at the minute, and the, um, this would be me third fight in seven months with Cage Warriors. You know that's that's serious activity. Um, only had me first fight with them at the end of April there, 29th of April, and here we are in October about to have me third one. You know, coming out of the the Jolene fight, in, in the lead up to that, we were kind of saying, you know, James Power was on the card, you're on the card. If you both win, that could be a good good match to make. Obviously, he didn't come through that, but Pagani yeah. got the win there yeah. and remains undefeated and looks a prospect in himself. Um, was there a name though? Were you looking for a specific fight coming off that win? Um, yeah, so power with power in mind, um, and then like when Pagani won that, um, it kind of, it made, Pagani came up to me and actually gave me the knuckles after the mm. fight, and then I was kind of like me and you next. Yeah. But he doesn't speak English, you know. Oh, okay. and he, was, he was mad confused at what I was saying, and then. Uh, like he was kind of like, what, what, shrugging his shoulders? He's and like, I'm after coming up and uh, congratulating yeah, you, yeah. and you're trying to fight. Well, me. <laughs> that, that, yeah, it was kind of like that. But then Chris was like, respectfully, yeah, to get yeah, me. Yeah, Chris course, made that, yeah. and he just didn't understand what he was saying, so he walked off. Look, I respect him. I think Bagani's a great, great fighter. You know what I mean? Really good fighter. That makes sense. You know, when when you were angling for kind of a specific yeah, fighter, and then yeah. this guy beats him and is undefeated, it kind of makes sense, sense, right? Absolutely. And I want the toughest tests and the biggest challenges going forward, Andy, because it's the UFC I want. You know, that's I'm building in Cage Warriors. 
to get to there and I want to be tested before I get there in every sort of way, you know? Yeah. When we last spoke, it was before that fight, obviously, and we were kind of discussing how the lightweight division's in flux, mm. the champion had left, there wasn't really a clear contender, and now, in the space of a couple of months only, I feel like it's been flipped on its head where oh. you've got George Hardwick is back in Cage Warriors. Mason. Paul Hughes is now back and he's, he's got up to 155. Division, yeah, Mason yeah. Jones. Um, where it's a weird one because like we were kind of talking about how you get a win and you're almost like in not maybe not pole position, but you're you're in touching distance of, of mm. a title shot. How do you feel about that now when there's there's more names that have I, I guess more established names that have been around longer than yourself. Obviously, you're on a phenomenal <coughs> yeah. streak at the moment. Um, well, look, you know, obviously, th th as you said, them lads are around. Like Mason, double champ, back in the division. Paul, round Cage Warriors, long time, coming up now, lightweight division, Cage Warriors, featherweight champion. Like, these lads are, are in Cage Warriors a lot longer than me, you know what I mean? So, like, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm, as I said, I'm not rushing towards anything. Mm. I'm 24, I'm still young, I'm building, I'm on a great win streak, momentum at the minute. do want the toughest challenges and, and I will face them. But I'm just building off momentum mm. at the minute. And I'm in a good spot. And, you know, whatever way it plays out, it plays out. But I know I'm on the right path, you know? Absolutely. Um, you, you know, I was just speaking with, with Adam there. Um, he's looking for a fight with Adam yeah. Cullen. He's a guy yeah, who you've, yeah, you've looked yeah. for before. Are you kind of having conversations with me like, right, hang on, you, you can get this guy, I get that guy. You're in the same yeah, division. Yeah, we, 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 we do chat a little bit. Um, right now at the minute, you know, like I was only saying to Chris last night, like I feel amazing uh, at this weight right now. One mm. week out, like one week out, Andy, if I'm making lightweight, like, like I'm, my moods are really low. I'm miserable, my energy's low. I, I, like if it was for, uh, one week out from weigh-ins yesterday, I'd probably only do one hard session on the Friday. Yesterday I trained hard twice because of how fueled I am at the moment. So I feel unbelievable right now and I feel I can push like a serious pace without this major weight cut. So I'm gonna go out and, you know, try to run this um, not as much as a weight cut next week, mm. see how I feel. Like, lightweight is, I, I, I know I can make lightweight, but who knows, like, you know, I, I, I might feel unreal out here next week and say, do you know what, I might take this going forward. So you so, could consider just be like, right, I'm a welterweight uh, now. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, I think it's inevitable that I'm going to end up there. Mm. And for longevity and, and, and from a health uh, perspective, like, I'm all about my health and, and longevity in this sport and that. And these weight cuts are major, major weight cuts for me. I, I cut a lot of weight to make the weight. You know, there's the pros and cons to everything. But I might just go out here, you know, next week, put on an amazing performance and say, right, John, I feel unbelievable at this weight. I'm staying at this weight. You're saying you cut a lot of weight. Like, how, how bad does it get for you? I saw... Um, just before I was coming over here, I happened to see the, the Irish Independent did a, an article with James Sheen, and he's you know, the headline was, like, okay. I'm on death's door. Um, there you go. Is, like, is, it, is it bad? Like, is it, it bad for you? It, it's bad, but it's mentally sharpening, Andy. I do believe it gives you an edge, you know. Like, when you're going through major weight cuts, the whole week of, you know, being miserable, thinking about the opponent, thinking, you know, this cunt's making me, you know, I'm starving because of this cunt, I'm, I'm, I'm drained because of this cunt. And then when you refuel and all, you do feel amazing when you do it right. But, you know, you kind of associate the camps and the fights with misery. Instead of, what, what happens with a lot of fighters when they cut major amount of weight is they focus on the camp as shifting weight right. rather than improving skill wise. Right, yeah, yeah. You know, so there's pros and cons to everything. And I know the way nutritionists these days are looking at it, they're saying fight at your natural weight class and get, get fueled going in. Yeah. They don't want to be, you know, depleting your body too much before a fight. You're after doing all the training, six weeks of tr dieting, looking after your body training, and then you go and do one of the most unhealthiest things and then go and fight again. Do you know? So I'm kind of weighing it all up at the minute and I'm going to try to run this how I feel with this, not as much as a weight cut and see how I feel, yeah. you know? What's the message from Chris coming into this one? Obviously, a bunch of you on the card again. Uh, he's a very vocal coach, as we all know. <laughs> um, Chris is just, you know, he, he, he said this guy likes the pressure, is what he said to me, and he goes, he doesn't know what pressure is. In other words, he, you're going to bring the pressure, because that's what I do. And he said, look, just go out, and you're going to put on another amazing performance. And, you, you know, you're on, I think, you know, he said you're on one of the most active win streaks at the minute, Absolutely, you know, yeah. in the country. Um, he goes, I don't think anyone else is on a tear like, like you at the minute. And he was like, he, he just knows it's going to be another dominant performance, you know. 
I mean, I think it's, it's pretty undeniable the, the streak that you're on at the moment and, and the activity that you've had. Do you want to get out there again before the end of the year if you get, if you get through this one? Um, uh, so, yeah, I, I was. I think, right, if it's going to be lightweight now, okay. I don't, if it's going to be lightweight, definitely not. I won't see lightweight till next year, but, you know, go over here now next week. As I said, not a huge weight cut. Still cutting weight, but not a massive amount. And if I get out unscathed in this one again, you know the way I roll, Andy, like, I could say, do you know what, get me in there again. Now, I, I, I know I'm not going to be prioritised for the Newcastle card because this will be my third one this year. Right. But I'll be definitely saying to Chris, get on to Ian and tell him I'm ready for a pull-out, you know, at 77. I'm ready to go, like. I mean, I think, I think it's show like, your activity and the way you've come through fights, it's shown, you know, Ian mm. Dean and, and the mm. Cage Warriors brass that you, you are ready to go. You, you'll, you'll take a fight where you don't know the Whenever. opponent who's coming. You'll no, take no, it no, no, a no, short okay. notice abroad. This is my um, life. Ideal scenario. You know, we talked about the the names that I suppose are in the division and and the, the, the how established they are. Mm. Does it excite you also? Because like, it's pretty undeniable that you should be one of the guys that's been pushed towards the top of the division mm. now. If you you know you come through this fight here, that's another win. Another you know, are there names that excite you to face in the future? Um, yeah, of course, there's names that, that excite me in the future. You know, I, I believe with the lads at the top of that division right now, like you know, you've George, Paul, Mason, and these guys. So I think you're going to see a lot of them and back in the like Mason back in the UFC, Paul maybe in the UFC, George as well maybe UFC. You know, um, I think a lot the division's going to chop and change a lot. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like one minute, yeah, they're all here, and then the next three lads are gone, or two lads are gone, or one lad's gone to PFL, or do you know it could chop and change. But like you know, like I'm like I know. I'm in the right promotion to get the best tests before the UFC, you know, and I am very excited about the names, you know. Absolutely. Well, I know you are a man for prediction, so the last thing I'll ask is your prediction for this fight against you and Davies on Saturday night. Um, yeah, I have it wrote down already. Four round finish. Four round finish. Four finish. Sober KO. Um, I want to say TKO. TKO. Well, look, Leon, the professional heel, taking on you and Davies this Saturday night in Dublin's RDS Arena. You can tune in on UFC Fight Pass um, and see you there.